Hi, I'm Sanjay Majumna. I'm a plastic surgery consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. Uh, and for this Medicine in a Nutshell talk, we are going to actually take a walk through theatres. And the reason is that people who are not familiar with theatres, you may not know exactly who the team members are, what the team members do, what's the etiquette and so on and so forth. First thing is the garb. You notice I'm not wearing outdoor clothes, I'm wearing a hat, which is to make sure that hair doesn't fall into a sterile area. I'm wearing theatre issue uh, top and uh, trousers. Uh, and I'm also wearing a theatre issue shoe. This is to ensure that they have the shoes there. This ensure that we don't bring the, any contamination from outside. And when we finish uh, our day's work, we change into outdoor clothing. So we don't take anything outside. So the first thing is that if you're not having a local anaesthetic, patient was normally going to the anaesthetic room where you'll get a general anaesthetic or spinal or block or whatever. So let's knock and see if we can go in. Hello. Welcome. My name's Lisa. I'm one of the BODPs here. This is where we greet the patients when they come into the, uh, the anaesthetic room. This is the anaesthetic room. It's got a few different pieces of equipment in. Anaesthetic machine, drugs, fridge, trolley where we're going to operate on the patient. First thing we do, get the patient settled, laid down on the trolley, put the monitoring on BP, ECG, pulse oximeter to keep an eye on the patient and then also once the patient's settled, I do a checklist to make sure we've got the patient's consent form, the name's correct on the risk label, the date of birth, the unit number, because until that's all correct we can't proceed any further and then I'd hand the patient over to the anaesthetist. Hello, I'm Dr. Roy. I'm one of the anaesthetic doctors in this hospital. So as uh, Lisa said, that once we have the patient comfortably on the bed, we put on our monitors on the patient, that's our monitor, that's where we monitor the heart rate, the blood pressure, the pulse of the other vitals of the patient. Once we, uh, we have the patient comfortably on the bed, we attach all the monitors to our patient, and that's the anaesthetic machine, which we use in order to give general anaesthetic to the patient. So apart from general anaesthetic, we also give our patient regional anaesthetic like spinal, epidural and blocks. So as you can see, I have a small trolley behind me and in this trolley there are a lot of drawers in that. So that's the important trolley for us because that trolley has got all the necessary anaesthetic equipment starting from the laryngoscope to the bidder and the better instruments here. So as you can see, once we have our patient here, we put in the monitors, we check the WHO checklist with the patient, we put in the scalula according to the different size, whichever is required for our patient, and then we start the, uh, the IV fluids for our patient. And once the patient has been properly prepared, we start off with the anesthetic uh, procedure in the patient. And once the patient has been anesthetized, my colleague Lisa and I, we help the patient to transport in this trolley inside the theater. So Lisa, shall we get Yeah. So you're pretending that there's actually a patient on the trolley. The, 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 the eagle eye in you would have noticed that there isn't actually a patient. But for the purpose of this video, let's assume there's a patient. So the patient now being transferred across. So Lisa and Tom, why this bit that the, the transfer of the patient from the anesthetic room to the operating theatre? That's quite a critical bit, isn't it? It is, yeah. That's when we have to make sure that the patient um, blood pressure, ECG, pulse oximeter is connected, we have a heel bar to relieve the patient's pressure areas, we have a warmer on, we might have a temperature probe in the patient as well, because if they've got quite a bit of skin exposed, the temperature can drop quite considerably, so we have to make sure the patient's the most important person in the room, so we have to make sure we look after them. And once the patient has been transferred in here, it's a really important aspect in my part at least to make sure that this anaesthetic machine is connected to the patient, the patient is getting the proper uh, percentage of all the gases that's been delivered from the machine and he's been ventilated properly and adequately. Great, so once, once we reach a situation where our anaesthetic team are happy that the patient has been safely transferred across and whichever anaesthetic we deliver that the patient is safe and comfortable, then we can proceed with preparation for theatre. And for the preparation for theatre, what I'll do is I'll hand you over to the other two members of our team, Sister Troughton and Anya Janik. Okay, so 
Landscrum nurse for this uh, procedure today. And while the patient has been uh, anaesthetised in the anaesthetic room, I and Anya have been checking the instruments. The instrument trays come with a pre-printed list, and Anna has been uh, ensuring that we've got, the, uh, along with me, that we've got the correct instruments uh, for the procedure. We also account for other items that we use, like the special uh, uh, gauze for mopping up blood during the procedure. This gauze has got a black line through, and that's a, a radio paint marker. So then, if uh, a piece of gauze does get lost during operation, we can't account for it, we would have to x-ray the patient. And hopefully this indicator would show up under x-ray that we could locate the gauze, but hopefully that won't happen because I and Annie are going to account for things, aren't we, Anya? Anya, can I um, check this gauze, please, and maybe put it on the board, please? So we've got 10 by 10s, one, two, three, four, five, and one at a time. We've also got one scalpel blade, a lot of the instruments are quite dangerous to use the sharp, and certainly the scalpel blade is sharp. Um, nowadays, we are not allowed to hand the scalpel blade to the surgeon hand to hand. We have to hand the, the scalpel blade to the surgeon in a receiver, and I would expect the surgeon to place the scalpel in the receiver once he's finished with it. Again, he's not allowed to hand it, hand, hand it back to me or lay it on the patient. Uh, we've also got two sutures, Anya, and a mag pen and ruler. Janet, you're, you, you're dressed differently to the rest of us in theatre. Uh, can, can you just tell us a little bit about why you're dressed that way? Is it just style, fashion, or is there something <laughs> else? It's not very fashionable to wear. Uh, I'm dressed this way to keep uh, the instruments and myself uh, stare out so we've got a clean environment to, to do the operation. Uh, once the patient is fully anaesthetised and the anaesthetist gives us permission, we will prep the patient's skin and apply uh, sterile surgical drapes. This one's got a hole in so we can just lay it over the actual operating site. Uh, and the drapes are usually blue or green and this signifies that they are sterile. Um, so anybody else who are not dressed in the surgical gown and gloves. I'm not allowed to touch these instruments or any, come anywhere near me to keep things really sterile. And you, when she's handing uh, extra sutures or anything to me, we'll just um, bring them to the edge of the trolley and not actually come over the trolley to keep things really sterile. And you, can I have a, a bag for suture please? They're, they're too old. Thank you. So Anya will demonstrate on how she opens the packet without contaminating the inner packet. And I will reach over the sterile field, okay, to take the uh, extra suture. And you will you record that on the board, please? Thank you. Um, once we do start the operation, the patient's draped uh, and the trolley will come in close to the patient. Uh, won't be tied anybody who comes anywhere near uh, the sterile field who are not. Uh, and gloved because there is a danger of contaminating the instrument tray and the patient and then that would delay the procedure by us having to uh, re-scrub and get fresh instrumentation. So all of this obviously is to maintain a sterile field to reduce the risk of infection and as a consultant plastic surgeon and a uh, surgeon who's been a surgeon for many years I can tell you don't ever 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 never ever touch the, uh, the trolley. The trolley is a sister's domain and you may lose a digit, and I might need to come out to put it back on for you. Now, Anya is uh, our healthcare assistant and runner. Anya, what, what, what's your role? Well, look, my role in theatre um, is, if, like Sister said, we will we'll count the entries together. If she needs any swabs counting, if she needs any extra swabs, any extra sutures, I'll get them, but obviously stay my distance away from the tray. And an extra pair of important hands in the theatre, just in case anything goes wrong. Touch one, nothing will go wrong, um, but I'm there in case. So the, the entire team, all the members, focus on one individual, that's the patient, and our role is to ensure that safe surgery is carried out. Um, Lisa talked about the first part of the checklist, the second part we do in theatre, which is called the timeout. the first part is called the signing, and we, we go through the identity of the patient and the surgeon, the anaesthetic staff and the nursing staff ask different questions which all pertain to the safety of the patient and the procedure. We've got a different video outlining that. If you just have a little pan around theatre, you'll see the different aspects of theatre. There's a 
area where you can do it. There's a timer, there's a clock, there's a way of buttons and uh, switches to enable us to ensure that we have an optimal environment in theatre, temperature, humidity, and so on. We've got sutures and so on the side. Every um, every um, theatre in the UK has computers because a lot of the data is computerised. Um, and now, before we finish, once the operation is finished, uh, we have something called a sign-out, and before anybody leaves theatre, we ensure that every part of the procedure has been documented and any safety concerns are then uh, handed over that go on to recovery. And we will talk about the PACU, which is the post-anesthetic uh, care unit in, in a little while. That's where the patient would normally go for their recovery phase. So, if I can get the rest of the team here, we just this is this is a bare minimum team really, uh, and yep. So we've got our our scrub nurse, we've got the surgeon, we have the anaesthetist, we have the operating department practitioner, with the healthcare system, uh, and that's the the theatre in a nutshell. Thank you.